I know you guys want another Leonard video. Well, so do I. Don't worry, I have been working at the bench here where this reactor exists. What I did is I cleaned everything up. I put all my stuff in bins. I got ready to put some new code into this acoustic generator, the square wave stuff. I've been working on code for that. And then also I did something really nuts yesterday. I ordered this radio code Geiger counter. It's essentially a scintillator that has spectral analysis and there's an app for the iPhone. This gives me some baseline so I can understand what's going on here. If there's any radiation or there's any spectral contents that start to come off of this thing when I'm doing bubble claps. I started to get a little bit nervous the other day seeing that bubble stabilize. I was like, eh, I don't want to be bombarding myself out of this viewport with something bad because I don't have my neutron shield up. I don't have a neutron detector, but at least this will give me a baseline. There's currently just deionized water in this reactor, but even so, the walls are aluminum, and I see some sort of stuff happening at the walls of the reactor through the microscope here whenever I turn on and off the ultrasound. So it's probably essentially just cleaning the surface of the aluminum. But there could still be small vortices, there could be collapse, there could be stuff going on, especially where that bubble is, that could be doing something, even if it's just some UV or, or like far, like uh, I guess energetic UV, maybe getting closer to some of those other rays, shorter in the spectrum. I don't want that stuff coming out without knowing about it. The other thing I'm taking a moment to prepare for here is I want to update that GitHub documentation with the actual CAD that I have working. So once I get that bubble stabilized well, I have good software and I essentially have a sonoluminescence reactor, a reliable sonoluminescence reactor. I plan to have that all buttoned up on GitHub and then I'll probably start selling this as a kit because then that could help fund the rest of the search for the Leonard. Who knows how much it'll cost? It's probably gonna be really expensive, probably just for like universities or, or really crazy mad scientists out there who have a lot of money. But um, you know, there's a lot of machine parts in it. My goal is not to make money on this thing. It'd be great though, just to keep this lifestyle going because I don't have like a Patreon and all that. So I have, to, I have to justify these videos if you guys want more content. So one way to do that, I think, in the spirit of open source is to offer this hardware. It would still be open source. You could go machine it yourself and make it. But that's sort of where my mind's at. That's why I want to get this spectrum analyzer. Make sure this thing is safe first. And if it's not safe, we'll know how unsafe it is and it'll be documented in the GitHub. Next steps in a video coming soon are going to be adding that output regulator. We've got to add the electrolysis up in the top of that Tesla valve so that we can get our D2O hydrogen loaded into the palladium colloid. So it's, the rubber's really going to hit the road here in the next uh, couple months of videos. We finally lost the bubble. It's been chilling there for most of this video. So we have something we can kind of modulate with sound now and control, maybe change the position of it just by what we're doing with the waveform. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, let's try to grow this channel and then I can give you more content. So give it a share, like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Adios.